What is going on guys? It is Parker here once again. Today we are looking at what seems to be another great sub for under that $100 mark. But let's see if it looks like it could outdo the Audio Pipe BDC2 or the Dark Audio in KO. Well, let's get to it. Alright guys, well let's get right into it. Again, HDS 2.1 12 this is the D4 by SoundCube. In my opinion, from other subs I've seen, SoundCube makes a really good quality product, which I really like. So, first off, we get the SoundCube, the decal, and y'all know that's going on the Jeep. All right, guys, well, here it is. Out of the box, looks really awesome has the exact same basket that's on the HDS3 and the same thing that was on my American Base Elite. All right, guys, well, here it is. We're going to start from the top, like always. Uh, we have a really stiff, good-feeling center cap, so that's awesome. We have a nice paper cone. Uh, not as stiff as some other ones, of course, but it's a $100 sub. We actually have a, pretty much a high roll surround. It comes up like a good inch, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to guess this thing is definitely going to want to move. Uh, we have our gaskets. And then we have we have a stamped steel basket on this. Uh, we have our push terminals. Looks like they can hold up to like eh, 8 gauge. We have our single tensile leads. They are of course sewn in to the spider. Nice looking black spider. We got tons of glue around the spider so we shouldn't have to worry about that uh, delaminating from the baskets and then yeah we got vents here for cooling we have copper voice coil in there looks like a two and a half inch down here at the bottom 600 watt RMS 1200 watt max this is their heavy duty street series is what they're saying I guess that's what the HDS stands for got some more cooling around here um, they make all this stuff just look really cool, which I really like. Let's see if we can get this magnet cover off. There we go. We have a double stack magnet. So, yeah. Well, let's look up the specs on this bad boy. All right. Now, this must be a little bit older version than what their newest one is, which is kind of weird because I bought it straight from their website. But they say it has a double stitched surround with the green stitching. And they even show it in their picture. But there is no double stitching on here, so who knows what's up with that. Again, maybe it's just a little older series, but again, not a big deal. I paid under 100 bucks for this thing, so not going to complain. Seems to be glued on there very nicely. Uh, they just mentioned it's a stamped powder-coated frame. We have a 2.5-inch four-layer copper voice coil. We have a non-pressed paper cone with added fiber in it to make it a little more rigid. The FS on this thing in the 12 inch is 29.6 hertz, so that's awesome. This thing should get nice and low. We have all the different kind of maxes there, the Q and the V and L and N and all that stuff. The sensitivity is 85.44. Uh, they do not state their X max. Here's a picture of what they show on their website, just so you can see the green stitching on there. Kind of odd. Mine doesn't have it, but oh well. And I paid $94 for it, and that's what it still is. It's a 12-inch dual 4-ohm. So, yeah, guys, that's it. Not really much more to say about it, but, again, for $94, just seems to be a pretty solidly built sub. Glue seems to be good. Coils look pretty good. That's awesome. It's a four-layer voice coil. So, yeah. So far, everything looks pretty good, but, of course, what we really care about is how it performs. So, let's get it in the box. All right, guys, we got it hooked up. And, of course, we got it hooked up to the SMD uh, four-post terminal, which is really cool, by the way, guys. Anyway, makes my life easy. Just hook one into each coil, and we are good to go. Now, here is the American Base XFL. This thing is a monster. This is definitely my favorite sub that I've reviewed on this channel so far. Let's get a little bit of size comparison there. 
And guys, this thing is only 180 bucks. If you don't mind saving up a little bit more money, I would say this would be worth it. Probably, in my opinion, one of the best really budget subs you can, you can get, at least from what I've had. Of course, there's other stuff out there, but anyway, let's get this in the box and we'll start testing it out. Well, there it is, guys, in the box. Looking good. Excited to have it in. Uh, for anyone that cares, this box is 2.7 cubic feet, tuned to about 32 hertz, depending on, again, you know, what size you have in there, what size sub you have in there. And then we're powering it with the SCAR RP2000, 2000 watts at 1 ohm. This is wired on the 2 ohms, so it's 1400 watts at 2 ohms. But then we're going to be getting impedance rise. So we're not going to be seeing actual 1400 real watts, but either way, should be a good deal more than 600 at full tilt. So really going to be testing this thing out. Well, let's get to it. All right, guys, now that song says that it was hitting at about 25 hertz, um, and it sounded pretty low, and it sounded actually pretty good in this big old box. Anyway, guys, yeah, for a $100 sub, this thing gets pretty low. I'm loving it. All right, guys, well, we are going to do a sweep from uh, 25 hertz to about 100 hertz. So let's see what that sounds like, and we'll see how this thing moves. All right, guys, well, there you go. We got a 140.8 on a $94 sub. That's pretty crazy. It means this thing, at least in burst, can really take some power. So that's, you know, pretty cool. Props on SoundCube. Uh, anyway, it seemed to peak between 45 and maybe 55. In there is where it really got pretty loud. All right, guys, well, what do y'all think? This thing did pretty good. Didn't smell it whatsoever, even when I was doing some of those really low uh, tests. So yeah, I have a buddy who has the HCC 3.1, and he's had that thing for over three years, and he just blasts it every single day everywhere he goes, and it is still holding up just fine. So it seems like SoundCube's quality is pretty good when it comes to building subs. Now is it better than the AudioPipe BDC2? I would say 
Probably not. The BDC-2 had a stupid stiff cone on it, and then it also had a cast aluminum basket instead of the stamped steel basket. But about it was about the exact same price, so they both really had, uh, as far as specs go, similar voice coil, you know, stuff like that. It was really about the same, so again, kind of hard to say if one is really better than the other. Anyway guys, still, this is a great sub, very impressed with SoundCube. I really want to get, you know, like an HDX3 or something like that at some point, maybe even, I think at the HDX4, that would be crazy, but we will see. Alright guys, well, thank you all so much for watching, definitely seems to be a budget gym, sounded really good, it seems to be great, great build quality, so yeah, really, really happy with it, SoundCube seems to have done a great job with that. Anyway guys, thank y'all so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more videos coming soon. Yeah, I also forgot to mention, but the Dark Audio Sub also had a 3-inch voice coil, whereas this one that I just reviewed and the Audio Pipe only have 2.5-inch voice coils. So, again, just something else to do a think about. You know, I think between the three of them, they're all really about the same in my opinion. Not a whole lot of difference. I would just kind of go whichever one you like the best. I think they all, all three of them would hold up really, really well. But yeah, I would say it's a great sub.